Good afternoon, everyone from Joy Wellness Partners and Enlightened Aesthetics here in San Diego, California. Happy March and uh, looking forward to April. Today, we're going to talk about the gym. And I have a wonderful Mr. Martina Erskine, who's in his second year of being a nurse practitioner here at Joy Wellness Partners. She is going through her anti aging and functional medicine fellowship right now and taking all of the knowledge about hormone metabolism and bringing that to light to us today. So we're really honored to have her presentation and we look forward to a great set of questions. You can hold your questions till the end and put them in the chat box and then we'll go through them at the end. Thank you. Hi, uh, so I just changed the title of the presentation this morning from Dean to Dean and Hormone Metabolism because it's really, really hard to talk about Dean without mentioning uh, a little bit about the estrogen metabolism and also testosterone aromatization of estrogen. That's why the title, um, this is the supplement we always uh, suggest for all our patients that are on hormones or, or not even on hormones to take it. And um, a lot of people don't like to take that. So I thought it would be good to do this presentation, but it's kind of explains what are the benefits of taking this. Um, so there are the different forms of themes. Uh, this is, of course, in the middle of chemical um, structure of the deem. Um, those are two brands that we like to use. We use uh, uh, deem from BioT because it has a SGS class in it. We also like the deem from protocol for life balance because that one has some calcium deglutarase in it, which will explain, I will explain sooner, soon uh, why it's good and what the benefits of it. So then uh, the chemical name of, for this is diandolyl methane. Um, it's actually naturally of compounds, we can find it in a Brussels sprout, broccoli, cabbage, kale, cauliflower. Um, so it's not natural supplement. Um, you can eat those supplement, you can eat those veggies instead of taking them if you're really have you're really in good diet. So it's not necessary to for everybody, but it's hard to eat broccoli or cabbage every single day. That's why um, we highly suggest for patients to take the dim. Um, so some people ask uh, what's the difference between uh, I3C and them? It's basically the same. They both are uh, from processed vegetables. However, uh, the I3C has to convert to DIM to become a DIM. So it's like kind of skipping one step. Um, so what are some benefits of DIM? So um, it decreases uh, risk of hormonally related cancers like breast cancer, prostate cancer, or thyroid cancer. And uh, how does it do it? It actually helps convert the active estrogen into two hydroxy estrogen versus four or 16 hydroxy estrogen. And they're like two hydroxy estrogen is a good estrogen. However, four hydroxy estrogen and 16 hydroxy estrogen are those bad estrogens. And I will explain why and how it's metabolized. And also improves free testosterone levels by preventing its aromatization to testosterone to estrogen. And also bind to the receptor and stimulate apoptosis, which is healing of the dead cells, healing of the cancer cells. Um, yeah, AMPK, uh, AMPK signaling. So this is like a um, very simplified type of like graph shows us how uh, estrogen, which is E1 estrogen, can convert to three different pathways. One is two hydroxy estrogen pathway, which is a good one. Uh, then it's 16 hydroxy pathway, which is the, called the ugly one. And there is four hydroxy estrogen uh, pathway, which is the bad one, the worst one. And that one causes that, like you see, it's pro carcinogenic. That's the one that causes a lot of estrogen related cancers. So we have three different types of estrogen in our body. It's not just one, um, it's not just estrogen. We have an E1 estrogen, we have an E2 estradiol, and we have an E3 estrogen. And each one has a little bit different um, benefits. So estrogen is the main estrogen in our body, and it's mostly makes uh, that's the main estrogen that makes uh, postmenopausal women. Um, and a high level of that uh, estrogen can um, may increase the risk for some breast cancers. Estradiol E2, uh, that one is the um, really, really good estrogen. That one actually uh, increases HDL, which is the good cholesterol, decreases LDL, the bad cholesterol, um, decreases total cholesterol um, number, um, reduces atherosclerosis, um, really helps with absorption of some of uh, the electrolytes like uh, calcium, magnesium, zinc, helps maintain memory, um, and helps maintain bone structures, and increases serotonin, which is the happy hormone, and decreases fatigue. 
And then last one, a strong E3. That one is 80 times weaker than E2. However, it's still really, really good and still does similar things like um, increases HDL, good cholesterol, decreases LDL. Um, this one restores by general pH, so it's really good for uh, prevention of any UTI, which is during our tract infections. Um, also helps maintain pregnancy. And that one uh, binds to uh, estrogen receptors, so prevents um, those receptors to be occupied by the bad estrogen E1. So now we'll talk a little bit more about the E1 because that's the one that converts to three different pathways. Um, so like you see on the top, it's as strong, the E1 that we talk about, and it can go three different pathways. Uh, one, the long the green one, it's the good pathway. It's called 2 hydroxyestrone pathway, and then it converts to hy 2 hydroxyestrone and that one is the good estrogen, um, blocks action of stronger estrogen, and might, uh, might prevent cancer formation. So that's the pathway we want to go through. Uh, the second pathway, it's 4-hydroxy pathway. That's the worst one. That's the one that directly damages DNA, causes some DNA mutations. Um, so people that have very low methionine or yeast or folic acid deficiencies tend to go that pathway. And the third pathway is 16-hydroxy pathway. Um, uh, this 16-hydroxy estrone, it also have, um, causes risk of uh, breast cancer for women. It's also not the best pathway. It's really um, in damaging to DNA unless it's converted back to estrel, which is E3 on the top. And people usually tend to have um, choose that pathway over other ones when they are like obese or have a hypothyroidism or they have some exposure to, uh, to toxins or have uh, too much omega-6 fatty acids, not the free one. And you know it's increased with uh, inflammatory cytokines as well. Um, so all those three pathways are called phase one of estrogen metabolism. Once it goes through phase one, it has to go through the second phase, which we'll talk about soon. But how can we help with phase one? How can we increase estrogen to go to the right pathway, the green one, the 2-hydroxy pathway? So there are a couple of things we can do, like take DIM or I3C. Um, DIM pushes estrogen to go the right pathway, or we can eat cruciferous uh, vegetables instead. We can take uh, resveratrol. NAC also helps with that. Some bacteria like bifidobacterium. Also calcium deglucorate. That's the one that is in the other, the red team um, that I talked about uh, before. Uh, we can do iodine, some other exercises, weight loss, um, flax seeds, soy, kudu. It's kind of like a plant herb um, you can take. It's really good to kind of uh, balance the hormones too. Um, omega-3 fatty acids, rosemary, turmeric, and high-protein diet. Also, we have to remember, you know, not everything uh, converts easily when we eat stuff. We have to keep in mind we have to chew food 30 times before it can actually help us because uh, glucosinolites, are, they're found in cruciferous vegetables. They have to convert to isothiocyanates. And to convert it, you, they have to be actually... Um, the enzyme uh, marosinase enzyme has to be activated. So to activate that enzyme, we have to actually chew our food slowly. Just a fun fact. <laughs> um, so now once we push estrogen through uh, phase one, now we have to focus on a phase two. Because if we will focus on a phase one only, not addressing phase two, then uh, estrogen will get stuck here and will start backing up and will start going in the wrong pathways. So actually addressing phase two should be our first step before going to phase one. Um, fa uh, phase two, it's called methylation. Uh, two hydroxy estrogen has to be methylated to two methoxy uh, estrogen. And like you see, there's two pathways. It's called methylation detox. So how can we support phase two? And that's why methylation is, oh, this is like definition. Methylation is basically adding the metal group to, uh, to the compound. So what supports methylation? B2, B6, B12, and folic acid. That's why for all our patients, we not only check hormones, but we check very often homocysteine to see how they uh, absorb the Bs, uh, also how they methylate the Bs too. And also we check B12, just to have an idea if patients like really, really depleted of Bs. And that's why we very often say like, oh, your Bs are very, very low and you need vitamin Bs to actually um, metabolize your estrogen. So it's really important to address both pathways. That's why, a lot of our patients are taking metal factor 
that has already methylated uh, bees and methylated folic acid to support um, phase two of estrogen metabolism. The other um, supplements are SAMI, methionine, that is in our MIC uh, skinny shot, and then also TMG and um, all stress reduction. So aromatization. So we talk about uh, estrogen metabolism, and now we will talk about testosterone metabolism to estrogen, which is called aromatization, because the enzyme um, that converts testosterone to estrogen is called aromatase. So once patients are like um, converting too much testosterone to estrogen, their estrogen levels can be too high. Estrogen, we know it's really, really good for us, for our body. Uh, however, in excess amounts, it can cause a lot of issues like heavy bleeding or spotting, spotting like between periods or spotting for a uh, postmenopausal woman, uh, weight gain, especially in your hips and thighs, breast tenderness, gynecomastia in men, um, fibroids, endometriosis, insomnia, uh, some mood issues like irritab irritability, um, mood swings, anxiety, low libido, fatigue, and bloating and water retention. So those are all symptoms if, uh, of estrogen dominance when too much testosterone converts to estrogen. So how we can prevent that? DIM. We can take DIM for that. That kind of prevents uh, conversion of too much of testosterone to estrogen. We can put patients on a medication, which is anastrozole or uh, letrozole. However, those are medication, um, they're by prescription, and they have a lot of side effects because they block too much. So patients very often end up having zero estrogen in the body, which is also very dangerous. And the other supplement is resveratrol, again, uh, or natural uh, bioflavonoids like quercetin. So quercetin, it's really fun because we start up uh, putting a lot of patients on quercetin during COVID time because, um, you know, opens up the cells for the zinc to come in. So it's really good for immune system. So recently we have a lot of patients already on quercetin and a lot of patients on zinc. Um, so those are two um, supplements that help uh, prevent aromatization. So um, Chrysin, uh, that's a fun one. You can actually add that one to the testosterone cream. So uh, now our uh, compounding pharmacy does that. So anybody who's interested in testosterone cream and converts too much to estrogen or doesn't want to really, really take dim um, uh, and doesn't want to eat veggies, then we can always add chrysin to the cream. So automatically prevents aromatization. Um, other one are progesterone, kudu again, uh, this plant, um, grapeseed extract, and also tongat ali, which is um, herb that was famous like a few years ago or like 20 years ago for actually increasing natural testosterone. So that's to increase testosterone naturally and also prevents uh, testosterone aromatization. Um, so obesity, that's like a fun fact because um, as estrogen is usually um, uh, produced in our ovaries um, and a little bit in a fat tissue. However, for postmenopausal women, um, this uh, ovarian biosynthesis is replaced by peripheral site synthesis. And very often if women are postmenopausal and obese, um, the source of estrogen is fat. So not only fat causes more estrogen production, but also estrogen dominance causes fat. So it's kind of like a vicious circle. Um, also, BCT pushes the, decreases the 2-hydroxy pathway of uh, estrogen metabolism, which is the good pathway, and increases the bad one, which is 16 hydroxy. Um, and then uh, also... Uh, and also obesity is a risk factor for developing and the cancers like breast cancer. So DIM dosing, uh, women are usually on one kilo of DIM, which is 150 milligrams a day, unless they are a little bit symptomatic, they feel a little bit of breast tenderness, only for tenderness, we uh, up them up to two kilos. Uh, men usually take two kilos, they can take uh, three or four, depends on the symptoms. So in summary, um, it's really, really highly suggested that you would check your hormones and see what levels you are at. And also it's very important to check hormone metabolite levels because those uh, graphs I show you of the estrogen metabolism, I took it directly from the Dutch test. Uh, that is urine test that basically shows you how your, which pathway you uh, prefer, you know, like not prefer, but which pathway your body goes to. And then, then you can address that and treat it. So it's a really good test to do for anybody that's on hormones or even people that are not on hormones. Um, another thing to summarize is address phase one first by taking methylated bees if needed, and then address phase one by taking DIM or eating crucifix vegetables. 
basically eat healthy and move a lot. Uh, okay, thank you for your time. If you wanna, if you have any questions, you can contact Joel Wellness Partners. There is a, our phone number here. Uh, and you know, you can schedule an uh, appointment with us. We do hormones, we do hormone metabolites. So, um, you know, feel free to reach out. And we offer a uh, 15 minutes complimentary uh, phone call with providers. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Turn it off. <laughs> huh? Oh, yes, yeah. Any questions? That was so much and so fast. No, no, no. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah, all those like uh, all those pathways, all of that I have to like remove everything, draw everything on myself, put all those circles. It was like so much technical work that I have to do with this event. You know, you, you guys have no idea. <laughs> it, was so, it was so fun because I want to do it like visual, you know, not just talk about it like in a plain uh, word, but I just want to like, you know, do it like a picture, you know, so you understand which way it goes. And I find so many estrogen metabolism pathways, but I find the one from Dutch test, which is actually, that's a result of the Dutch test, like yeah. an example result, you know? Mm -hmm. And I find that one like the most visual. Mm -hmm. So I really like that one. Well, so if you don't have, let me see, uh, you guys can unmute yourself, like Lindsay and Paula, and let me know <laughs> if you have any questions. <laughs> Hello. Hey. Hello. <laughs> um, I was texting you about this, but like I can, I've been doing them to everyone. Are we still Sorry. recording? I mean, I can do a recording. We still, we, we can always stop the video. We'll stop the video. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, which is, this isn't like a secret, but um, <laughs> I'm just wondering. Um, so I've been doing that women's phase one. It's been kind of helping. And then I did, my, I cleared up my skin and then it's coming. I'm getting hormonal acne. Like, just like that's it. And so mm -hmm. I was wondering if like, oh, I should try doing like a dim a day and see if that helps the pathways. I'm like not yeah. doing muscle factors. So like, does it matter? Like, is it actually gonna like, how like how much does it adjust your hormone pathways? Just like, does it kind of just like nudge it in the right direction, or does it like should I actually kind of do the whole mm -hmm. protocol? So hormonal acne is usually due to DHT, um, which is like dihydrotestosterone. It's the best bed testosterone. So because testosterone also have their its own pathways, yeah. not only convert to estrogen but also can convert to DHT. So that's like a, another lunch and learn I'll have to do about like uh, how to prevent testosterone to convert to DHT, you know, yeah. what natural supplements to take for it and what we have in a clinic. I do neutrophil them. Like is it, if that is like, if it's more of like a testosterone, like, like you said, how, cause it might, yeah, I don't know I'm estrogen dominant. Yeah. Um, estrogen so. dominance usually doesn't cause uh, acne. You, you might be estrogen okay. dominant. You might be like converting testosterone uh, through five alpha pathways, which is the best mm -hmm. pathway testosterone mm -hmm. and you might just produce more uh, dht than actual the pre-testosterone okay. yeah okay oh so i'll be like dht blockers which are full kind of that pathway mm -hmm. okay. Okay, cool. oh i'm glad i asked because i was like i'll just do dim <laughs> on the pathway on the pathway synthetic estrogen so there's a bunch of paperwork that was done if you take synthetic estrogen like an oral estrogen that's the one there's a couple articles that uh, prove that estrogen causes breast cancer, yeah, but all of those articles are based on a uh, oral estrogen taken for postmenopausal women without taking progesterone. Mm -hmm. So it's that's why. And there's 15 other articles um, that actually prove that estrogen is breast cancer uh, protective if it's taken as a bioidentical form in a cream or pellets, and also mm -hmm. if it's taken with progesterone for postmenopausal women. So the balance of all the hormones, and then just putting estrogen. So, so like if someone's having like estrogen dominant symptoms, like could they just like take like one dim to start or is it always like do blood work first? Like how? Uh, it's good to do blood work first because what yeah. if you are pushing your estrogen into right pathway, but right pathway is stuck because your estrogen cannot methylate, you know, like right here. And if you cannot methylate, then it's backs up and goes into four hydrox and 16 hydrox the pathway. So that's why they say addressing methylation is the most important. That's why like we're starting like checking <laughs> easy. That's why we started checking the patient's homocysteine because people with high homocysteine tend to have very low Bs. And also we check Bs as well to see if they even methylating. How long do people work on the methylation portion before they can kind of like 
like for like a month or is it like do it for a week and then throw it down? It depends because some people naturally methylate their bees and some people don't. So some, sometimes they have to take a methyl factor like three pills a day for like one month and then they can, can drop it to two, to one. Some people just have to take methyl factor one pill a day just to sustain it, you know? Sure. Not that it can methylate very, very well. It depends on the diet too, you know, how much you absorb. If you have leaky gut and you don't absorb bees, even if you eat very, very healthy and all of that. Oh. Martina, right. Martina, uh-huh. you, you mentioned something to me last week in our consultation. You said if you put um, the cream, the testosterone cream on any place that has hair, it will, yes. turn, it will turn into, what did you say and why is that bad? So if you put testosterone in a hair, hair tend to convert testosterone to DHT, which is dihydrotestosterone. And it's the bad testosterone that actually causes the acne. That's why the hormonal acne was what okay. About okay, mm-hmm. yeah, and yeah, basically, if you put it on hairy places, it'll just on those areas, it might grow more hair, right? Yeah, it, you it could, hair. yeah, it could if you mm-hmm. already hairy, but yeah, that's not really necessary purpose, but it could, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, somebody who wants to gain hair on their head can put testosterone. Oh, no. yeah. I wish it would work like that, but it doesn't. Yeah. Nope. It's like for some reason, you get more of a beard, yeah, and more like coarse hair wherever you have like more like you know underarm or feet yeah. hair, but then you'll lose hair on your head. Yeah, if you put on your head, then your head and your hair are so much stronger and longer than anywhere else in your body, so they will convert to DHT, and DHT is that uh, hormone, the bad testosterone that causes not only acne but causes men's balding. So you actually will cause more balding. Interesting. Okay. Nope. It's a, just an a aromatase blocker and then pushes estrogen to the right pathway. Uh, DHT blockers are like sopalmedo and stuff like that that we have in sopalmedo, the herb, and it's in our truffle supplement. I can do like separate like, for about it because I'm like super passionate about it because my testosterone can completely convert to DHT. So, you know, I want to like research more about it and like find all the cool stuff we can do naturally to yeah. prevent that. Mm-hmm. Next month, it's coming, DHT. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. That was great. Okay. Yeah, really Thank good. you. It was awesome. Thank you.